friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Vaughn Fawn's Wheelie Great Day Coaster Critters and Happy Village. So I've stamped those images out on two separate panels of Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock with Vaughn Fawn Jet Black Ink. And I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I wanted to create a really bright, happy, colorful card to kind of go with this amusement park theme. So I'm going to be doing almost like a neon rainbow. You'll see what I mean in just a little bit. But instead of the red, I'm going to do a hot pink. And I chose RV04, RV06, and RV09. I'm going to do one of the little... Um, what are those called? Cars? Are they cars on a Ferris wheel? Um, but I think you know what I mean. I'm going to do one of those and I'm going to do a separate one to match. And then I'm also going to do a stripe on the ticket booth. So I'm going to flip back to my other panel here now and do a balloon as well. Just so I have little pops of these shades all throughout the scene. So I used the RV09 first on all of these, blended out with the RV06, and then the RV04 was my highlight. My next combo is going to be an orange combo using YR04, YR07, and YR09. So I'll do another one of the cars on the Ferris wheel and another stripe on the ticket booth. And for those little cars, I'm putting the shading on the outer edges and blending toward the center. And then for the ticket booth awning, I just decided to put the shading on the right hand side to keep it consistent across each of those. And then I'm going to do another balloon as well. And I'm also going to do the fox with these shades. I just wanted to keep everything really bright and light and keep the color palette really simple so I'm not going to pull out like other shades of orange for him especially since he's so small I think these colors work really well then I'm going to do the stripe on the roller coaster cars so I put the YR09 at the back blended forward with the YR07 and then the YR04 I'm going to put at the front and then I'm going to move on to yellow I'm using Y13, Y15, and Y17, and I'll do another one of the cars and the matching one off to the side. So technically for the card that I am creating, I didn't have to stamp the extra little cars or buckets. Um, it's only just to make them look a little bit more tucked in securely to have like their the edges of their paws back behind the edge of that little bucket. So um, you could recreate this card without stamping the extra ones out if you wanted to. Um, but if you use a critter that has like the full body like the bunny does, then you would need to have that extra part for sure. I did also use this yellow combo on the sun and the little kitty, just to have another little bright spot on the card. And then I'm gonna move on to my greens. I'm using YG11, YG13, and YG17. So I'll do another one of these cars and another stripe on the ticket awning. And just, again, putting that YG17 on the outer edge or on the right for the ticket booth and then blending toward the center with the YG13 and the YG11. I'm also going to do the frog in these greens and I am going to do a second layer on him as well just to smooth him out a bit and give him a little extra definition since he's one of the main focal images of the card being one of the critters. So I also did want to color in the treetops with these greens, but I wanted to darken up the combo a little bit. So I'm going to bring in a fourth shade and use YG67 first down toward the, uh, why do I always want to say stem? <laughs> the trunk, the trunk of the tree. 
Then I blended that out with the YG17. And to be honest, there was very little difference between these two shades. So I probably could have just stuck with the original combo. But anyway, I blended out with the YG13 as the lightest on the smaller tree. But I did save a little bit of room for the YG11 on the two larger trees just to make them slightly different. So those trees have all four shades, but the smaller tree just has the darkest three. So for my neon rainbow, I'm actually going to skip over blue and head straight into purple. And I'm going to use V12, V15, and V17. So I'm putting that V17 on the outer edges of those little buckets for the Ferris wheel and also the extra one. And I'll do the last stripe on the ticket booth as well. And then I thought it might be fun to have a purple roller coaster. So I decided to do the roller coaster in purple as well. So just like I did with the stripe, I put the darkest, the V17, toward the back of the car. And then I'm going to blend forward with the V15. And then I'll use the V12 for the highlight at the front. I just thought it would be something different. I was trying to think of something I haven't done before. I know I've done like red and blue and other you know versions of these cars so I thought purple would be fun and then I did the last balloon in that little cluster with these purple shades as well so even though I skipped over blue in my neon rainbow I decided to add in a little bit of blue for the shading on my white parts so I'm using BG10 and BG11 and I'm going to do quite a lot of the mechanics of the different things here. Um, I'm going to do a lot of the Ferris wheel in these shades, including the stripes on the buckets and the frame around the top. And then also the frame that kind of makes up the whole mechanism of the wheel. I'll do all of that with these shades. I didn't want to have any gray or black in here. I just wanted to keep it nice and bright. So I decided to skip over using any kind of grays, but I wanted there to be kind of like this white balance for all of those bright neon colors. It just gives your eye a little bit of a place to rest in the middle of all of these, um, you know, brighter tones. So I'm just going around and adding some shading with the BG11 and then blending out with the BG10 and letting the white cardstock be the highlight. I'll do the same for all of my clouds. And by the way, those three separate clouds, it's all one cloud. I just wanted one of them to look different. So I stamped it upside down so it has a little bit of a different look to it. So there's a little trick for you. If you want your clouds to look a little bit different, you can just turn them over. And I'm also going to do the framework of my roller coaster with these shades. And I wanted the color to be a little bit darker down at the bottom where those shadows are. And then maybe a little softer at the top where the sun would be shining on it. So I put those darkest shades down at the bottom. And I am actually going to go back and do a little bit heavier coloring with that BG11. I didn't want to introduce another shade. Um, I just wanted to keep it to these two, so I will kind of do a second layer in certain parts of it just to beef up that saturation a bit more and make it a little bit darker so it would stand out down at the bottom. I also forgot to do the legs and the base, the foot, whatever you want to call it, of the Ferris wheel. So I am going to go back and just do the, that with the same shades as well. Like I said, I didn't want to introduce too many extra colors because the colors that were there were pretty bold already. So I will bring in some brown neutral tones because I still have a couple of critters to color in as well. So I brought in E51, E53, and E55, and I'm going to do the ticket booth first using the E55 for those shadows, and then blending out with the E53. 
Just bringing it in from the sides on the lower part and then up toward the top on the side rails. And then I'm going to use these same shades to color in the little bunny. So I'll bring in that panel. And again, just put that E55 down the left hand side of his body since he's facing toward the right. So that will keep the sun on his face. So then I'll blend toward the front with the E53. And then I'll use the E51. And I did decide to leave a little bit of white space on his belly and his face, but I wanted to transition into that, so I did use some E50. And then I am also going to darken up this combo for the rest of my images. So for the little bear, I'm going to bring in E57 for him, start with that, blend out with the E55, and then I'll finish him with the E53. And I'm also going to do my tree trunks with those shades. And the whole time I was coloring these things in, I was trying to figure out what to do with the tires or the wheels on the roller coaster because I didn't want to bring in any black or gray, like I said. And I thought about doing them in brown, but I wasn't sure if that was going to look strange. So I was just kind of racking my brain on what to do for those. And uh, in the meantime, I also did add a little E50 to the white parts of my fox's face and then ended up going back to the BG-11 for those wheels. And then I trimmed all of these images out with their matching dies. So because there's already a lot going on with the images in the scene, I decided to keep the background really simple. I took a piece of cilantro cardstock and trimmed that down with one of the Stitch Hillside borders. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment down at the bottom of that. I'm using a sentiment from Coaster Critters and stamping that in Noble Fur ink. And I put together a sentiment that says, Have a Thrilling Birthday which I think goes really well, again, with this theme. And then I'm going to pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using a piece of mermaid cardstock for that. And I'm gonna stamp in peacock ink. And I'm gonna keep the inside really simple on this one, so there's plenty of room to write a message to the recipient. I just did another one of the little roller coaster cars and the sentiment, enjoy the ride. So I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of my grass piece and line that up on the front of the card. So the actual card front is going to become the sky in my scene. And then I'm going to take another piece of foam tape and add that to the back of the main part of the roller coaster. And I'll line up the second piece behind it and use that foam tape to pick it up. That way it'll put some distance between those two pieces and make them look further apart. And then I'm going to tuck it down into my hillside. I didn't want to tuck it down too far, so I am going to have a little bit of a gap there where the hill kind of goes down, but the roller coaster is still straight across. But I'm going to cover that up in a minute, so don't worry about that. And then I'm just lining up where I want my Ferris wheel to go to make sure that I will be able to cover up that gap. I did adjust it just slightly to make it a little bit lower, but not by much. And so I could see that there was just a little gap left, and I'm going to fill that in with one of the trees. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now so I don't have to worry about it later on. I'm just going to add that larger of the two trees just behind that ferris wheel and in front of the roller coaster it also pushes that roller coaster back further in the scene and makes it look like the scene is more expansive and then i'm going to add some liquid glue to all of the ferris wheel except for the pink car that one is going to be up in the sky so i added a little piece of foam tape behind that one to make everything nice and level and i'll do the same thing with the roller coaster cars i added a thin strip of foam tape behind those to make those level with the front part of the roller coaster i'm going to add my ticket booth over toward the right hand side because we've got all of that empty space that we need to fill up and also pull some of that bright neon rainbow of color over toward that corner as well 
And then the sun and the cloud, I wanted to kind of nestle in between the Ferris wheel and the roller coaster. And then I'll go ahead and fill in the rest of the sky with these other clouds. And I'm just making sure that I add the two that are, you know, kind of stamped the same direction so that they're not right next to each other. So I was just kind of looking through all of the images and making sure that I knew which direction they were facing before I add them into the scene. And I also wanted to pop some of them up with foam tape, so I added uh, that behind two of them, although I'm going to end up taking it off of one of those, but we'll get there in a minute. So see what I mean? I'm making sure that the clouds that I turned upside down to stamp it are kind of between the two that are the same. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to start filling in the scene with all of the cute critters. So I'm going to take the little frog and add him to the purple car. I made sure that wherever my critters were going to go, that the car that they would be in would, you know, not be the same color as they are. So, and then I just added the extra one over top. So his little hands are kind of tucked in and just makes him look set a little bit back, as you can see, between him and the fox before I place that down. And again, I made sure like the fox wasn't going to go in the orange bucket. I wanted there to be more contrast. So I just kind of planned that out as I was figuring out this card. So then I put the bear in the yellow bucket. I just thought that he looked really cute in there with his brown fur against the yellow and so you can see you don't have to add that extra little piece they still look cute even if you don't have them on there but I just like the way they look tucked in there it kind of reminds me of baby Yoda on the Mandalorian or Grogu um, kind of going around in his little car whatever you call that so anyway I added the kitty to the ticket booth and the bunny heading over to get his tickets for the ride since it's his birthday in this scene. And now is when I decided to move one of those clouds and add a tree in that space to take up a little bit more of it because there was a lot of empty space in that top left corner. So I wanted to fill it with something that was a little bit taller. So I'm going to take one of the taller trees and I just added some foam tape to the back of that as well. And um, then I decided to just pop that cloud back up there. But I didn't like it with the foam tape being level with the tree. So I took the foam tape off and just added it with the liquid glue behind the tree. And then that last little tree I'm going to add over toward the right hand side and I just use the foam tape from the cloud on the back of the tree where it was going to overlap into that space where the distant part of the roller coaster was. So all that was left was to add in a bit of sparkle and I didn't want to do too much on this one so I'm just going to add it in a few little places here and there. I think this card could easily be pretty gender neutral, so I wanted to keep the sparkle to a bit of a minimum, so I just added it to the clouds and the balloons and the white stripes on the little cars of the Ferris wheel. And that was it. I didn't want to do too much, and if it got a little bit out of the line, I just kind of cleaned it up with my finger a bit and kind of smoothed it back across the lines. And that's going to finish this one up, so I will lift that up so you can see all of those fun little details. I think these sets work so well together. And there's another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button to let me know. And you can leave me a comment down below. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already and have your notifications turned on if you'd like to be alerted whenever I post a new video. All of the products that I use will be listed for you in the description bar below with links. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.